<laughs> Anyone not been here before like to ask a question? And you can ask it really quietly into a microphone. Oh, you've not been here before. No, Oh, you've got that voice, you shouldn't have <laughs> Oh God, if only I knew what I got plan of my career in the future. Yeah, I don't know. Everything that everyone else wants to do, I suppose. <laughs> do this, do that. Uh, if you had a dream job, what would it be? Um, I don't even know that, which is probably why I'm a problem. <laughs> For any agent who goes, oh, what's your dream job? I don't actually know. <laughs> I know what are not my dream jobs. Things like, you know, being a mental patient in Holby City, things like that. <laughs> that they try to make me go and do, things like that. Doing a tea bags advert, things like that that I don't want to do. So there's loads of things that I know I don't want to do. What I actually want to do is like little quirky cameo bits in, you know, quirky films. <laughs> no acting required then. Yeah, that kind of thing. Because I haven't done acting course apart from evening classes, so you know, I'm just kind of feeling a stand-up that just happened to end up being in Red Dwarf. So uh, that was such a, a weird thing. I, I was um, like from being from being a secretary to being in Red Dwarf was about a year and a half. So uh, you know it was all a bit weird like that. So I didn't really have a career plan set out and all that kind of thing, and I still don't have sadly. <laughs> I just see what happens. Although I don't advise that if anyone's thinking of a career in any kind of acting or anything, it's best to have some sort of plan. I'd like to have been in a Harry Potter film. Yeah, I, I did actually go for an audition to be the librarian, but then it was cut out. But it was cut out before I got, I didn't even get the part, so I can't even say <laughs> I wasn't cut out. The part was cut out before I even got it, so that's quite good. So at least I didn't get it, mess it up, then it was cut out. <laughs> and that was weird because the um, thing they didn't warn you was that you went in for the audition, there was no one there, it was just a video camera. And you just had to improvise to a video camera, which was quite fun, really, but it's quite daunting when you first walk in, looking around for someone to say, hi, and it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> just a room with a video camera, and you just had to mess around with the books and um, just talk to imaginary people, which is what I do anyway, so <laughs> no big deal, really, I don't <laughs> So, um, yeah, that would have been good. Actually, well, one, thing, one thing's on to say, one I think of it. Um, I, did my, uh, Edin, I did my Edinburgh show this year, at Edinburgh, which is the best place. And, um, <laughs> and then I went over to New York for a week to do it over there. And uh, one night, this, this woman turned up with a friend, and it turned out to be Frances Barber, who you'll know from Polymorph, uh, playing the, we can't think what she was called, could we? None of us, not just me. Yeah, the, that's it, yeah. Yeah, so, so she turned up to the show, and then she said, oh, because she was over in New York in King Lear, and uh, she said, oh, we're going to have a, the cast, we're going to have a few drinks, Do you want to come along? So I went along, and uh, so, so Ian McKellen was King Lear, so he was, it was at his place, and then Sylvester McCoy walked in, <laughs> and it was like <laughs> turning into a sci-fi convention, <laughs> and like, oh, a bit of a surprise. <laughs> the other cast people going, oh my god, I didn't realise I'd accidentally come to a sci-fi convention. <laughs> and then they realised how nice it was. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. I thought it was you, but it's you. Hello. Hello. Um, it sounds, it's a bit of a boring question, but so... I'm uh, sure it's not. My answer would quite likely be just that. <laughs> what was it like being the ship's computer? Well, it was good, yeah. I enjoyed doing it. It was fun. There's lots of fun working with everybody there. I know they always say that on chat shows, but we did have a real laugh. You can imagine, like, you know, because they're all mad, aren't they? Yeah. So it was great. It was like just going and messing around every day. <laughs> well, would you like to do another episode of Red Wolf? Um, yeah, so I've had my hair a bit cut now, so I'd have to wait for it to grow. <laughs> yeah, if they write another one, yeah. Of course, yeah. I would like to be in a Red Dwarf episode, but... Well, you've almost got the right hair yourself now. They should do, they do the next generation. <laughs> <laughs> they threatened us with that one time, when they, when they brought in, um, you know, the episode with Dwayne Dibley and everything. Pardon? Back to reality. 
Yeah, thank you. That was my helper. <laughs> Definitely need you. Um, back to reality, when they brought in all the lot, the next lot to play the computer arcade game thing, they, um, they said, oh yeah, we're doing the next generation, this lot are taking over. And they kept that little thing up for a while, so we did believe it. <laughs> well, I did, I don't know if the others believed it. <laughs> Hello, you're Hi, a regular. <laughs> Hi, how did you get your fringe shine scarlet? Oh, sorry, I should have talked about my hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> how did you get your fringe to go over to one side slightly like that? You grow it. Just a bit of lacquer. Um, I hope they went well, yeah. Um, I was still writing it, because I was writing it all year, but the uh, proper idea didn't come to me till two weeks before. So this is where you can't rely on things, you just keep writing it. And then they, the theme came together about two weeks before, which was kind of, why can't people just be nice to each other, but we can't, but we should try, but we can't, was basically the theme. <laughs> so um, I think they went well, I'm not entirely sure. So I, my, my, actually, Norman did write, he said his reviews uh, range from one star to five star, which I think must mean you're a genius <laughs> to go from one to five. Mine went from two to four, so it was like, his was more extreme reaction, and mine was just in that thing. So um, often it depends what night reviewers come as to how your show is. And also, so the, my, my show was in this venue called The Underbelly, which is a good old grungy sort of hip type of venue. But it's also, it's the vaults of the Royal Bank of Scotland, which they don't even use anymore. They don't even put paper in there anymore, yeah, because it's too crappy. <laughs> so instead they rent it out for shows during the Edinburgh Festival, and it's like boiling hot, as you're in like a little cave, and there's warm water dripping down, which has been there for years, quite likely. And uh, there's people, when you're doing your shows, people's there with bits of paper like this, because it's so boiling hot in there. By the end of a month, all the community added up um, <laughs> heat from the first week is still there because there's no like yeah, there's no air conditioning or anything. So um, with all these people going like that, it's a bit like strobe lighting after a while. <laughs> Whoa! Looks like everyone's moving around. But um, no, I think they, they generally went well. I think I got some really nice reviews. Um, good comments. I think a lot of people say they don't read reviews, but I think it's good because sometimes they do make valid comments. And it's, you know, and if you're going to believe the good ones, you've got to believe the bad ones as well. So you know, just that, take them all with a pinch of salt, really. Would that not affect your performance? Because you, if you're coming to a line, you know, somebody's giving you a bad review over. Does that yeah. like stick in your head? Yeah. Harder to perform? Sometimes you miss it. I'll tell you what's an annoying thing. Sometimes, like one, one review wrote, because a lot of my act is one liners. And they like, you know, just do all the one-liners. Uh, she said this. Uh, some of them you think, can you really write? Because they're writing a thing like, what I did on my summer holiday. You know, then she said this. Then she said that. Then she said that. You know, and you think that's not really a review. <laughs> <laughs> They've just listed your jokes. And so that night, I try not to do those jokes because, like you say, you get into it and you think, oh, everyone's read this one or something. You miss them out for a week <laughs> till that paper's chip paper. But the trouble is with the internet, they have things there forever. A friend of mine said, Oh, I read your review, you've got plastic ducks in your show, haven't you? And I went, No, that was my show in 1999. Because <laughs> 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 it's still on the net. That's what I hate about the net. Things just don't disappear. Oh. Um, it's a horrible picture of me on Wikipedia. I don't know how you change that. <laughs> <laughs> Must be going, mmm, like that. 